What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And we appreciate your support and getting us this far. Also, if you haven't already, you can join. That helps us in a lot of other different ways. So please hit the subscribe, hit the join, both right there. Now, today we have an honor and a privilege, man, of being joined by one of the true titans of the game the doc thank you for coming through sir thank you brother man it's always good to see doc and uh talk to him been fortunate enough to do it many times over the years I'm glad we're doing it again today and shout out to justin hunt for making it possible so doc man uh so much legacy to get to but before we do the co-defendant song that you had done recently uh, came out uh 2023 i was very intrigued about so much about this song so first of all since you haven't done any verses in a long time what made you want to hop on the fast one song with the co-defendants uh bro i just like the guys you know uh and it sounds good and, and if it sounds good then uh i think i can mess with it you know uh i've never been a punk as a matter of fact, I didn't even know them. That Mike was. I just met the guy when, when doing my documentary, but he's such a nice dude that uh, he asked me to do a verse. And because he let me use his house, I felt obliged. But when I heard the guy's music, I thought that they were all super fucking talented and was happy to be a part of it. Yeah. And it's been a, it has been a long time. And you know, I've seen you many times in this time since you did last did verses. So you're always around, you're always working, you're always helping artists, you're always working with artists. So as far as actually rapping, though, what made that the actual thing that you wanted to do as opposed to write for them or just give them advice or play some of the other well, roles? I, Mike asked me to rap. He asked me for 20 bars. And I said, okay. And, uh, you know, I really didn't think too much of it. I just laid it. And it turns out that, it, that people think it's cool and, and I think it sounds dope. And, you know, I've done a couple of shows with the guys. It's fun. You know, it's not what I would have thought would have been a DOC return to rap. But, you know, it's fun and it's cool. I, I like it. Well, that definitely makes two of us. But uh, lyrically, uh, one of the thing, this verse is extremely impressive. If people haven't uh, listened or checked it out yet, the fast ones with co-defendants featuring DOC you should check it out, pause the interview or watch it at the end of the interview, listen to it. But um, lyrically, as usual, you're shining on there. And some of the lyrics I really was impressed with was the living so off balance that even drowning's a challenge. So <laughs> how or what gave you that image and made that something you wanted to uh, mention? So uh, I've lived quite a life, you know, and there have been times where I've done so much stuff to this body. Uh, I had to have been trying to get out of here, you know. Um, but even I think, but I couldn't even get that boy right, you know. What I mean? So I was living so fucked up that that even suicide wasn't working, you know. What I mean? Um, but I made it past that part, you know, and I, I try to make it make it make sense to folks to say that you have to go through the really shitty parts before the good parts come. You know what I mean? And so the really crazy part that we made in as a music, as a people, you got to go through that to know that the great times is right around the corner. And from talking to you over the years and knowing what I know about your life too, it seems like that's been somewhat of a recurring theme uh, of your life. Or would you say that's true? And if so, why do you think that's a lesson that you have to remind yourself or you have to go through multiple, you've had to go through multiple times? Yeah, man, you got to go through it till you get it right, you know? And, and uh, I just got here. But that is to say, I just got back. Um, I would think Fast Ones is probably the first thing I've done since I've been back to me where you don't care. You know, I know I'm good. 
Hell, I've been good a long time, you know. I've known that a long time. But it was it was put into me so much that the voice was no good, it didn't work, it don't sound good, that I just shut it, shut it down. I still write raps all the time and record them. I just record them for me. But when my ass, I did it, gave them my best. I'm glad folks dig it because, you know, it makes me feel good. Yeah, it's very powerful verse. Also on the Fast Ones, you have a lot of like uh, social commentary and talk about clowns and blackface and minstrels and all kinds of stuff. And for uh, the stuff I think most people normally associate you with as an artist, it's not overtly political like that. So why I've talked to you many times, though, just you and me talking, I know you have a very wide ranging level of interest, but I think for a lot of people that might've surprised them. For me, I was like, oh, that's some of the conversations we've had. He's talked about that to me. But what made you wanna kind of break from how you're perceived and put that type of commentary in a song? Uh, it just hit the record, you know, they were, it's a punk rock record, so you're supposed to talk shit. And, and so I feel like we need to be, we need a little shit talking to ourselves, just us, because we do have to fix some of the stuff that we're doing that's ass backwards. You know, some of the stuff that we know isn't going to push us forward as a collective, whether that's musically or, or uh, as a race of people or a community of people, however you want to look at it. Like, there's really only one way we can go go forward, and that's together. Um, and we have to figure out how to do that shit without giving up each other, because we can't do it like that. That's not going to work. No, clearly not. And also with Fast Ones, you referenced that even, too, with keeping a hot boy, you get another strike, dealing with incarceration, especially in California, where they had this three strikes law, and that obviously sent a lot of people away for life. So how have you found the balance of understanding this and then playing that off of what we see in the music, in the entertainment? How have you kind of balanced that in your own mind, in your own life? So like I'm a G-O-D cat, you know what I mean? Like I, I uh, uh, we, we might get a, we might get interrupted by my sons. They just walked in the house. But I use that. My sons, my my everyday was real, was was really important to me. balance how I think about these topics, you know what I mean? Because I'm 55 years old. Just, um, and rap is cool. Uh, but it's much more important to uh, to build a place where these kids can grow up and have things and do things and be things. Uh, and as a collective, that's the kind of stuff I, I really want to talk about because I think that's that's where we're going. You don't have to be a soft uh, nigga to do that. You know, you could be a real one. Um, you don't have to be a soft guy to want what's what's right and what's cool. So that, that's what that's what I'm here to you know try to redefine what what that is and see if I can. Uh, help us understand uh, the trajectory that's probably best for us as a group to go get this paper and keep it. Right. And and I think that's going to be an interesting. So has this inspired you to, are you working on a project that you're actually going to release or are you just going to see how things develop or what? Yeah. They asked me to come back. I'm on my way to Vegas next week to do a couple more songs with these guys. They asked me to go on tour, you know, so who knows, you know? I mean, if it works for punk rock, let's punk rock it out. But my, uh, the stuff that's that's really important to me um, is getting this film out because I think the film is the first domino for the next season, right? Uh, I got a lot of work to do, and some of it is rapping, but some of it ain't. You know, and uh, I think that that's uh, 
that documentary is the first domino. Then I get to do all the things I want to do in Dallas, where I'm from, and give them their 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 thing, you know, find me. And uh, let's see if I can put some glorious work in there, some legacy work. Some of it's rapping, but some of it is getting together with these young guys that's trying to do it. Some is trying to uh, change the dynamic of uh, where it's going with respect to what kind of music you get on the radio all the time. Change the, the trajectory of where our communities are going based on the music that we're making sure gets heard out there. You know what I mean? Like it's a whole thing with me these days. But I'm excited about the next thing. All right. And then what is going on with your documentary? Uh, well, you know what? One thing about show business is it, it all happens to hard. And I'm still trying to find the right situation so that uh this film is seen by all the people that need to see it and in the light that it needs to be seen uh because i like i told you i think this is the first domino of many things going forward and and uh i think i might be this might be the best documentary you get in hip hop 50. It's a strong piece, you know. I'm super proud of it. And I can't wait, I can't wait for you to see it. Yeah, everyone that I know that's seen it, and there's only a handful, but they all loved it. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, also with fast ones, uh there you cuss a lot more on there than you do on at least your no one can do a better album in particular. So what and I know when you write for other people, we've talked about this several times over the years, how you write from their perspective instead of you saying what you would say. So why did you uh, inject so much profanity in the fast ones, whereas that's not something you normally do for yourself? That's a great question, bro. Uh, and I don't have a great answer for that. That's just how, I, how, it, how it came out. But But that's interesting because going back, you know, you always do this, you, you hear it. And then, like I said, I told people, I wrote that rap in 15 minutes on the way from my house to the studio and just laid it. I only, I only laid it that one time and uh, and that was it, you know. Uh, uh, so maybe I was just getting that shit out. But I went back later and I if I did it like this, it would have been more cool. You know, I did, you know, I, I did that to that piece, but people seem to really enjoy it, bro. So I was, I was one thousand percent with it. And when I performed uh, with with respect to, well, besides being out of breath and shit, uh, I feel that guy. You know, I'm still. I, I still had all of those same little uh, idiosyncrasies I had as a as that kid. I just don't have that balance and that and that breath control. You know, that's a big deal. Breath control is very important. That's for sure, yeah. especially performing and rapping. Yeah. Um, but with with that, looking back, because uh, you've been making music and recording music since the 1980s and the technology and the equipment has changed so dramatically. Um, you were saying, looking back at your lyrics on Fast Ones, back in the day, uh, do you think you would have been more prone to go back and change it? Or do you think now, because things are so different and you're so different that you're like, hey, let me just leave it? Like, how how do you think as a writer, as a creative person, you're looking at things differently? No, I, just, I, I would have absolutely went, went back and changed it. Um, and why? No way I would have, because I was a perfectionist then. But now, you know, at 54, what are, you, what, what are you trying to prove? You know, whatever it is that you, if you haven't proved it by now, you're not going to prove that shit. Uh, and then some of the arguments are starting to get boring because everybody stands on the shoulders of somebody else. Go to whoever you want, and they'll tell you it's me. But somebody taught them. 
you know, at this rap shit. You all got it from somewhere else. And so we are all great. Some of us a little more than others, but you know. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. A 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV is just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.